In my last video, I demonstrated how the image sharing platform Snapchat could have functioned in the 1980s on the Apple IIgs. Even though I didn't have the hardware to take a picture on the computer, I was able to put some of my own custom pictures onto it. I also promised I'd show how I did this, so I figure now is as good a time as any for the official sequel to my Agony of File Converters video from last year. I never really mentioned it in the last video, but getting anything on the 2GS is fairly complicated by the floppy drives it uses alone. Both 3.5 inch drives I own only support up to 800k floppies, while the drive on my PC only writes to 1.44 megabyte floppies. The traditional workaround I used for this was my Mac. It could read and write to both 800k and 1.44 megabyte floppies, which meant I could put a disk in from my PC, copy the files onto an Apple II disk, and everything would be okay. In theory, that idea works great, but through some weird combination of Murphy's Law and floppy disks' general distaste for convenience, the Mac was having issues reading and writing ProDOS disks. Alright, so no dice on just copying from one disk to another, but fortunately, both computers do have a serial port and terminal software. I just plugged my Newton serial cable into the back of the GS and tried to send a file over it. And sure enough, the transfer was successful, even if it did take a long time. When it came to putting a photo on the GS though, getting communication between my PC and the computer itself was the least of my problems. None of the software that I have on my GS can natively open any of the modern image formats like JPEGs, PNGs, or even bitmaps. Photos on the GS are stored in a format specific to the hardware of the computer itself. Super high res files, as they're called after the graphics mode used to display them, are exactly 320 pixels wide and can only hold 16 indexed colors at a time. I wasn't able to find any converter that natively supported SHR as an output type, and CiderPress, a program that'll become important in a bit, could only convert the other way around. I ended up using my transfer method to get a few SHR files off the GS so I could open them and inspect them on my PC to see just exactly how the files are constructed, and thankfully they are pretty simple. At the beginning, there's one big block that holds the actual bitmap of the image. Each byte holds two 4-bit segments, each of which holds one of the 16 colors a pixel can have. Then, later in the file, there's a sequence of 32 bytes. Every pair of bytes represents one of the 16 colors in this image's palette, stored as RGB with 4 bits to each color. In theory, that means there are 4096 colors the GS can display on screen, although, like I said, the hardware will only allow for 16 of those 4000 to be displayed at any given time. If I'm going to get an image on the GS, it's going to have to follow those rules, making the first step adjusting the image to fit within the 300 by 200 16 color limitation. And that's where GIMP, the free image editing program, comes in handy. With just a few simple functions in GIMP, I resized the image to the proper resolution, reduced the color palette to 16 colors, dithered the colors to get a higher looking color depth, and dropped each color channel to 16 levels. After saving the image as a bitmap to avoid compression artifacts, it was ready to be converted into an SHR image. Like I said before, I wasn't able to find a converter that would automatically convert an image to SHR, but since I was able to reverse engineer the file format, I just figured I'd write my own. During my first tests, the program needed the image to be converted to a CSV file, basically each pixel became a number in a spreadsheet, which it would then convert into an SHR. That got annoying pretty quick, and it prompted a very useful update. Now, the program can convert an image from GIMP right into the SHR. I know some of you are probably going to be interested in getting the code, and while I'm not putting it up for download just yet, since using it isn't all that intuitive, I'm planning on releasing it pretty soon with a GUI interface rather than a terminal. Okay, so we've got the SHR image and we've got a method to get files onto the GS. So all we have to do now is just transfer the SHR over to the GS, right? Wrong. I brushed on this in my last file converters video, but one really helpful feature of Apple computers is that their file system contains special metadata for each file called a data fork, and that one of the things the data fork holds is the file type. Most programs, including Paintworks Plus on the GS, will only open files of a specific type, and any file that comes off a Windows machine will have a blank file type. Now unfortunately, without third-party software, you can't directly change the data fork. I do have a program that can make the change on my Mac, but even then, the data fork is lost in the serial transfer anyways. Thankfully, there exists software specifically to solve this issue. Remember how I mentioned CiderPress before? What it is, is a program designed to open and edit Apple II disk images, along with files known as SDKs, or Shrinkit Disk Archives. SDKs are basically the Apple II's version of zip files. You put files and directories into an SDK, and their data is all preserved as well as compressed. I set the file type of my new picture to an SHR image with CiderPress's attribute editor, and I sent the file all the way down to my Apple II. I had to decompress the file on the Apple II, but once I did so, it finally showed up as an SHR image. 
I opened it up in Paintworks, and sure enough, the computer displayed the image. Just like the last time with the Newton, I'm really impressed that conducting a file transfer like this is even possible. Now, granted, there was a missing link this time that I had to fill in myself, but altogether, it's insane that there now exists a procedure to bring color images all the way back to a computer well over 10 years older than the Newton. I am aware that what I'm doing here doesn't fully take advantage of the GS's graphics hardware. In fact, some people have even been able to get up to 3200 colors on the GS display at a time, through clever manipulation of the hardware. For my needs though, since I had to edit an image on the GS, SHR files are the way to go. At any rate, now you guys all know how much effort I went through with file conversions, transfers, and edits, all just so I could use a picture of my GS in the video.